that was the halfway point? Yes, that is the halfway point. Orontes has joined the battle. Together with Axum, the Holy Land tries to reclaim Castle Menar in a pincer assault. Vance is hard pressed to defend against their combined might. However, in the final moments of the battle, an unexpected ally appears, Tyrants. So the Stratocracy of Tyrions is known as the strongest military force on the continent. Its history was forged by victory on the battlefield. The Tyrrhenian people are largely pragmatic and scoff at the worship of deities. This has put them ever at odds with the Holy Land Orontes. Although Tyrion saves Vance and his allies, he is not thrilled at their arrival. Leading the Tyrrhenian forces is none other than Colonel Overgar, a grizzled veteran. Mm. While he is a hero to his people, he is also an estranged father to Vance. Their history is a bitter one. The young mercenary wonders how long he can endure his father's disdainful presence. Whew. Chapter 11, Old Hatreds. Oh, oh man. Well, there are quite a bit of talks in the next map. But only one that I need to take care of immediately. got that Sun Jian charisma, but unlike Sun Jian, he's not in good odds with his, with his family, so, uh... Hmm. Oh, I see. So, uh, Vance is the can. Hello, can. Pops. Orgar is a bit of a generational stickler. That Xerox blood in him runs strong, and he wants to make sure it continues to run strong. He might just like, Pops, leave me out of it. <clears throat> Your brother, uh-oh. That's a swordmaster from two maps ago, wasn't it? Alan, Alan. No, that's Iyer. Oh. Alan is a different person. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Perfect body. Boy. Boy. 
Nossa, é boa. Ah, oh, nice earthquake. Perfect. Oh, I thought that was his rage. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like his aura was powering up. Just proceeds to use 100 power ground type moves in the direction. Better have pulled hooks. So basically, Olorgar is uh like the like like the relationship in Three Houses between Felix and Rodrigue. Only if Rod what if Rodrigue was an asshole as well? Yeah. Oh man, I like Rodrigue too. He's a good man. Yeah. He'd be okay with like the kids though. Not necessarily a bad dude, per se. If anything, Felix has got the problem. <laughs> yeah. I love Felix, but yeah. Anime dad got it. Never gone totally soft. Rail altar. This is like, ladies, you're both beautiful, but come on. Do not give him an egg. shoulder pads. The design on the right is straight out of Awakening. <laughs> it is. It is actually. Marvetta is based off of the Val generic Valkyries in Awakening. Ah. Uh, not bad. It's just it's just different, I guess. Yeah, the Awakening and Fates have had really different designs for classes. Well, I think Fates was more traditional, but it definitely felt different compared to a lot of the other still. It's definitely closer to Awakening than it is. Yeah, they're both relatively different. I think Three Houses is most definitely the most down to earth when it comes oh, to Oh yeah. Houses. We really needed that too. Oh god, Awakening Knights. Oh, oh, oh lordy. Mm -hmm. I'd rather take out Louise and his giant fucking shoulder pad. Same. <laughs> Louise is a good man. It's not Louise. You're right hand man. Well, Ro your name is Robes. Your name is Robes. <laughs> your name is Robes. What happened? Or they could, or he could be called Robes. <laughs> Oh, you're 
understand I'm a bit too close there. His name isn't actually Ropes. He's just wearing robes. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Damn. Yeah, your, parents, your parents don't hate you. That's good. Piece of work. <laughs> Light. Yeah, I'm a, I definitely have the feeling some shit's gonna happen here. Um, you think? You just have this idea now, why? Shh, leave her alone. This gives this now gives me an excellent time to field Corvin. Hey, listen, you have to reach level 20 to gain that epiphany. So now I since now we can uh oh look at that! Wow. Yes. Now this is the kind of roster I wanted to see. Mm, mm, cool. These are the deployment slots I want. Mm-mm. Yeah, this game definitely gives you Order of the Crimson Arm Syndrome, where you... There's a lot of characters you want to put in, but you just can't. I definitely Order think the, the, the last map would have benefited from having at least one more uh, person in the yeah. field. Hey, Dan! Nice to see you again. Alright, how we're doing, Vance? Yeah, I'm just gonna get him to level 20. I do. Uh, I could, uh, also... What's up, dude? Probably... You know what? He's at 12 strength. I'm gonna give that, uh, energy rate to Tori. What Dan is this again? That's Pondon. He was... He's, uh... He, he basically... He's one of the commentators for that one. Hell around in uh, FE3. He basically carried, uh, last year and this year's on his back, oh, for the most part. Nice. Right, oh. isn't it? That's why his name looks familiar. Hmm. He's a champion, huh? Well, good on you. He's also working on his own project, Vision Quest. Y'all check it out. Looks neat. All right, time to oil up Corbin. Now to give him his his fair due. Crystal Lance. I'm gonna need to buy irons again, though. Oh, uh, Ron, I don't know if you were there. I don't know if you've seen, but, uh, Bioth comes out in, like, four hours. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. Well, for me, I'll technically still have daylight, but everyone else, GG. <laughs> I'll technically still have... <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> I need Iron Axes bad. Real bad. Sorry, Nessa. Yeah, I'll either be labbing or, um... Violet, or I'll be doing something else. So this map is, um, huge. Huge. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Huge. And there's dudes in our faces already. Yeah. Lots of people were walking, coming in to say hi. Oh, the, the, oh, the, the, the soldiers are getting bulk, bulky now. Oh, Check Jesus, them out. Yeah, they, they have actual stats, wow. I noticed a lot of the strength, skill, and speeds are uh, around the same, though. And there's a general. Low defense, low low strength, but like some hella def hella death. Yeah. Javelin, javelin. Hammer. Huh. Here's one of the bosses. Ooh. Stephen. Stephen. Yeah. Spear, is that you? Um, good thing about this guy is that although Halberdiers do have crit bonus, 
senses. Um, this guy does not, because he's oh. a, he's designated as a boss. Oh. And Prime was like, you know, bosses having crit, kind of mean. I'm gonna disable that for boss characters. He still has high high enough crit with the spear though, so you need to need to watch that. I actually really like that that too because that can get really obnoxious on a lot of them too. Looks at a lot of the Fates bosses. Oh lord. So that's the left side. Let's look at the right side. Yeah, I remember that one Orontis. boss. Every six. Oh yeah, every six bosses too, right? Yeah, there's no, there's one with like a killer, a killing axe, I think. When you get yes, to the give me. Ooh. I want that. Oh, I like the design too, it's kinda cool. Yeah. Um actually Ron, uh, light brands are really buff in this game, believe it or not. Oh damn. What brand? Bruh. Oh <laughs> cool. fuck. Holy shit. Some stats on that kid. It's a lopsided mage too, we'll grab it. It's a Billy! Y'all are cowards! Disabling oh. crit on bosses! Nice. I guess I'll steal that. Hey, Billy, what's up? Hey. Terrence! Oh, Terrence! Hey, it's Robes! It's Robes! Gee. Oh, fuck, he has Luna. It's apparently not as good in this hack, though. Is it? Uh, it has, it has the same hit, but, uh, significantly nerfed crit. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. It's like FE8, uh... So we do have help, as you can see. Plenty of it. Oh wow, these a bunch of Cyberus and uh, Prydain are helping us out. Here? Is Daddy here? I don't With think uh, also say Russell it. and uh, Russell. Ryzen are still here, and they've uh, gotten some new new kits. Ooh, they look good. And here are the Tyrans boys. Oh Jesus! My God. And there he- Oh my- no powerful one And, uh, here's Ulrigar. No, get angry! Man, it'll suck when we have to fight this guy. He's what so- What are you talking about? He's so big! He's clearly gonna join us, right? He's- he's a- he's a fucking mammoth. It's oh yeah, they also have a Glory Knight here, and, uh, Sniper. Oh wow. These also, you're really seeing buff. some some things. Soldier weapons? What are those? Well, when we start the map, I'll tell you. They're really buff NPCs, Jesus. Special fucking strength uh, count. Yeah, I should be able to get to there in time. Maybe uh, Buck will also be able to make it to level 20 by the end of this map. Maybe. We'll see. Actually, I'm gonna give uh, Vance the training sword. He's starting to outpace Ava in damage potential. Billy, have you played Road to Ruin before? It sounds like you have. A few chapters. Okay. Not much. I gotcha. Pass that over. That line I said about Vance's dad, it was just a pure joke. So, oh. I have no idea. Yeah, he's clearly gonna join us though. He's the go-to of this game, don't you know? No, he's like one of those three Lagoos <clears throat> at the end of FE9. He gets to put Pick to Barn, uh, Gift Ka you know, and Sala. Gift and Sala. And Gifka. E. Yeah, it's a Barn, Gifka, and what's his name? Nisala. Yeah. Barn, Nisala. Unacceptable, I hope he dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Asin clearly likes him. Alright, uh, I believe there's a conversation between, uh... Who was it? Vance and, uh... I gotta look at this now. I, I, just, I just saw it, too. Uh, Kristoff. So I had to field Kristoff in this map. Also went with Tori as well. So I can't tell from the mini. Is Mars a female thief or an assassin? Thief. She's thief. Okay. She classes Asin. up to rogue. Asin, would you rather have him die or uh, Ronaldo? Because I remember, like, really early FE hacks just had no idea the female thief right exists, so they just use the assassin class for the map instead. Well, this is a new track. In order to help fight the massive enemies, your forces have been bolstered by generic units. Please be aware that their equipment cannot be used by any of your own units. 
Their equipment also cannot be sold. Finally, be cautious when giving them items. The equipment will disappear with the soldiers upon the chapter's end. Good luck! So all those greens became blues. Oh, that's cool! So these are these genericos are have soldier weapons, which are basically for just the, these signature weapons for the generics. This is to make sure that you don't get cheeky and sell them, so you can have lots of free weapons or free money, uh, so you can have. That's really well thought out. Goddamn. Also, so you don't get green by all the enemies, probably. Translators note: you may in fact may still get the end up. Meanwhile, Russell and Ryzen are still green, as well as these guys. Um, Ulrigar and these guys are not going to move. They're just going to sit and watch. They're dead. Uh, <laughs> so, where were Kristoff at? I mean, those two dudes next to Ulrigar don't have a face, so they're too powerful for this earth, clearly. Look, he's on the other side. Well, that's awkward. Da, 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 da. Oh shit, we have it. a captain now. I got it. Yeah, it's like those it's like those playable generics from FE5 only, you know, actually usable. Oh yeah, we have the we have this hype lore conversation back when Kristoff first joined, and then he was like, "Yo, you from Tyrans?" Like, yeah. You did you did the training? No. I would imagine he would have something to say about Ulrigar, Kristoff. He's a total legend back home. I suppose he is. No Look move. at him super downplaying it. You know who Vance's dad reminds me of? Ron. Cause I know you've played it. Uh, uh Jude's dad. From Zillia. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. not a fan of Jude's dad either, that's a fun yeah. thing. He was a bit of a prick. He gives me pretty big bison, though. He warms up towards the end, though. At least. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. He must be really low key. I never heard much about him. So uh, it really, he doesn't have a second son. Really helps Jude with his uh, finding himself arc. Yeah. But I guess it could also kind of be said for Vance here, from what I've seen. Oh. oh. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess we'll see if that changes. Oh me. Who's I love how he actually just takes it into in stride, and he's like, "Wait, nah, nah, you can't, you can't be v Vance Olgar's son. That doesn't sound right." But he's just, he's just into it. Let me, let me see the script. All right, that should be everyone. All right, now I gotta make sure I rearrange the map because I forgot everything. Everyone's fielded on the other opposite end. This is this is fine. Oh, Buck should be on Vance's side. Yep, no, seems right to me. I think Corbin should stay on that end because I believe Lucille spawns there. I'm gonna have to re check again just to make sure. I can't believe Kristoff is fucking gone again. Yeah, this isn't the side. Okay, cool. All right, I'm uh, gonna get a drink. I will be right back. Sort of had this talk in stream earlier, but I don't think Ron's, I'm pretty sure Billy's aware of this, but I don't think Ron is, he doesn't keep up with the uh, Pokemon chat. Oh, what is this? It's... Mm. <clears throat> oh, is that the new Pokemon Bank thing? Yes, yep. Pokemon Home. Okay. People are not happy about it. Oh, I'm sure. Which, okay. I think I think it's actually be kind of fair in this situation because 
Pokemon Bank basically did all this, but better and for cheaper price. Good start, Maris. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. I can I can understand the uh, the upset, the fact that they're upset. Yeah. Um, I don't think it really helps that uh. How do I put this? Pokemon Sword and Shield was in a bad situation before this anyway. Yeah. I don't true. think anything would have helped that, to be fair. No. Because the thing is, this is all pretty new to the Pokemon fan base. They never had to deal with shit like this. They kind of did back in Gen 3, but it's like... Not to yeah. this situation. Not to this extent, but it's been around for like six years. Well, the point is, like, this, co this type of controversy hasn't existed before in Pokemon. Well, times are changing. Nintendo. I literally said in Pokemon chat, this is Nintendo, like I was fucking talking about Activision or EA for some fucking reason. Like. Well, I mean, they're not, uh... Still gotta work on some things. Oh yeah, that's right, perfect. Pokemon Box. Pokemon Box. Oh, yeah. oh, Aaron shit. has a conversation with Ryzen. And, uh, Vance has one with Tori, but I can get that one later. God, I love those sh I love both their shoulder pads, TBH. Enforcement of uh, Aaron's uh, characterization. Uh, the both fields are on the opposite end. I should have seen that. Let's fix that. Got any of your uh, good old notes for us? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Um, hey. Let's see. Let me see. Cool crit. Nice crit. That's actually really nice. Helps out a lot. So I can give the chat two, uh, two, so two choices today. I can either go uh, for the Ash Saga to round out the uh, King of Fighters summaries, or I can go into uh, <clears throat> Fatal Fury. Fatal Fury. If you want to hear my input, I'd just say finish off. Uh, finish with off. Probably art of fighting on the side if I wanted to. I'd say finish off. Sakazaki. Current vote, current notes. 
<clears throat> well, there's not much left, so I might be able to fit them all if this map is super big. This map is pretty long. You'll, you'll have time, Ron. Oh, uh, well, I'm not even going to give you the choice then. I'm just going to go in order. <laughs> nice. Alright, so uh, let's go with the S saga. Oh boy. Um, let me close my window for this one. Alright, so, uh, let's see, last time was an S Saga, yes indeed, and, uh, if, before I go on to the S Saga, it should be noted that the S Saga has also, also has a, uh, has an unlimited match, uh, game. Another dream match, I should probably say, just like the Orochi Saga did. And uh, this is where Nameless has debuted, who takes the place of uh, fucking Tetsuo over there. <laughs> it's a really good game. Honestly, it's one of the best KOF games that are out. That's out even today. Uh -huh. What is it? Uh, it's King of Fighters Unlimited Match. I think that's the name. 2002. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ah, it's a pretty fine piece of work. Mm. Oh yeah, it's got a huge roster. Oh yeah, the genetics great. in this map can level up. Oh, that's... They can? What? That's pretty neat. Yeah, they can. I actually don't know if they have gross... Um, they do have gross rates. I know there's not like... Like, uh, Glades dudes in, uh, FE5, where it's just like 5 strength, 5 defense. Oh jeez, yeah. That's weird as fuck. Uh, actually I think I'm gonna look at the map to see if I can find their character ID itself. All right, looks like they're consistent across the board. If this is what this is right. Uh, okay, so it looks like the Cyber the Cyberus dudes have 60 HP, 25 everything else. Uh, the Prydain units have 70 HP, 25 everything else. Uh, this variant of the Tyrans, I believe the ones that you control, have 60 HP, 20 strength, 30 skill, 35 speed, 50 defense, 15 res, 25 luck, and I believe. The ones that are on uh, Ulrigar's side have 85 HP, 30 everything else. I think that's right. But yeah, you guys want a Xeno Saga. There you go. <laughs> That'll be fun though. Anyway, uh... King of Fighters 2002, really good game. If you ever have a top opportunity to get it, get it. Yeah. So uh, after that, uh, we begin the Ass Saga proper. Uh, actually, real quick, there's one more character that debuted in uh, 2002, and his name is Kusanagi. So there's, here's the funny thing. There's like four Kyo characters in the game. There's a uh, Ness Kyo, there's Kyo 1, Kyo 2, and Kusanagi. I think Kyo 1 is based off of 94, 95 Kyo, and Kyo 2 is 96, 97. That's right. Yeah, and Kusanagi is uh, someone completely different. And uh, he actually has a role in the Ass Saga, believe it or not. And I'll go into it later. Alright, so now begins the ass saga proper. So this saga is really weird because it kind of tried to do a little bit of a time skip. Uh, for example, you see uh, Terry is actually in his Garou outfit. Oh. Got the leather jacket, short hair, and everything. And we also see characters from Garou as well. We see Tzok, who is actually on Terry's team. Uh, we see Gato, who is... Uh, on Billy's team. Billy! And, uh... Might be one more in there, but I think there's more next game. Ooh! Good E2 dodge. Damn. Well, he's off the forest now, that's good. This That merm is really hard to hit. So, uh, the series stars, uh... The main character is no longer K-Dash. K-Dash is more or less in the background now. 
No, the main character this time is unfortunately someone uh, not as well liked. <laughs> The dude. It's one of the shortcomings of the game. Uh. Ah, here's a picture. <laughs> yep, there he is. Here's our main character for the next three games. Nice hair. Yeah, Ash Crimson. It's got one of the weirdest designs in the series. Yeah, I don't know what to. Like, those sleeves. <laughs> That hair. It's very weird. <laughs> that everything. What the? F I don't know what to make of this. Uh, well, basically, the idea behind Ash is that SNK wanted to make a hero that we'd feel bad for cheering for. Oh. Oh, right, that guy. Because the twist behind Ash is he's not the he's not a regular protagonist. Hmm. Like, uh, his, his team might say hero team, but he has very ulterior motives. She's always the best. <clears throat> so the tournament starts, uh, like usual, you know, like the usual KO affair, and the usual suspects are up to bat once again. Got the Ikari team, we got the Psycho Soldiers, we got Fatal Fury team, Artifighty team, and Kyo's team. But, uh, things are a little bit interesting this time around. The first two games are really weird because, uh, a lot of the teams are really, really weird. Like, there's no Andy in the game, so mm. Terry has to fall back on his friend Tzok to fill up with his, uh, friend Joe. That's one example. And Shin's not even in the game either. As far as I remember, anyway. I think it was actually, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. The game, uh, the game starts off with a uh, Chizuru approaching uh, Iori and Kyo about something. The good thing about this game actually is that it does put Kyo and Iori back in the forefront. And I just saw that missile strike. Right I don't know. So Chizuru talks with Kyo, Iori and Kyo, they're all like, um, so remember Orochi, I have a feeling that that's going to be a problem again, so I'm going to need your two to help me with that again. We're going to form a team together. But we and killed him though. <laughs> but we killed him though. No, you didn't. We stealed him away. Don't you remember your own lore? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we stealed him away, yeah. <clears throat> So uh, she's like, all right, I need you two to help me, and we're going to form a team. And Kyo's like, I don't want to form a team with Yori. He smells. <laughs> me. Oh. Oh. Ah, oh, oh. Hang. Think of the smell. That, that level smelled. And Yori's all like, yeah, screw you, man. I take showers every day. I don't need this. I'm out. He leaves. And Kyo leaves, too. So the two are actually in the game, but they're single entries. Meanwhile, Chizuru is just sighs and is like, you know what, I feel like I'm gonna regret this. And sure enough, she does. She gets brainwashed by a mysterious person. Whoops! And because of that, she actually creates uh, Kusanagi. Who is a uh, apparition from her mirror. He, he, looks, he looks like Kyo, he sounds like Kyo, but he's nothing like Kyo. He's like super mad Kyo. So the tournament goes on like normal, uh, but uh, it's kind of more focused around the Ikari Warriors and Kate Ash's team before Ash makes his move. Mm. Also, uh, I should mention that there are new characters with Ash. Uh, two pretty cool characters too. That'd be, uh, let's see if I can find them. So you remember the last game where there was a. Uh, an assassin named Ron and uh, Ling. In this game, uh, we have Ron's son. So this is my son. My son. My son. My son. Let's do a long. 
He's an assassin from China. That's another design. Uh, Falcon was in full power in this game. Yeah, I, I kind of don't hate it, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's kind of cool. Very unexplainable amount of hair, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of think that's a headpiece. That's just me. Are those just braidings around the, um... It's, it's a really weird design, <clears throat> mostly in the hair. I think everything else is kind of cool, though. Mm. Yeah. The next character is much more simple. Uh, let's see this. I mean, compared to this, anything could be much more simple. <laughs> Unless you're Seymour's hair. Oh, Seymour, of course, I guarantee you that. Yeah. There's the dude, Shen Wu. Oh, that's that's actually a big up with <laughs> Max's favorite character now. Ah. <clears throat> Shen Wu's pretty cool. Uh, he's known as the god of, uh, the god of, uh, battle in Shanghai. <clears throat> mm, excuse me. Ash basically hired them as his muscle. But, uh, Shen Wu is mostly there to fight, and, uh, Duolan is there to look for his dad. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the tournament. So, uh... Suspiciously enough, everyone who got into the tournament got a very strange letter with an R on it. R? Oh no, not again. Wait. Yeah. But we killed him though. But well, we killed him though. It's like it's like the Orochi, but we killed him. No, you didn't. He, he killed himself. Wait, what? Uh oh. So the tournament goes on <sighs> without a hitch. And uh there's two parts that focus on uh, important things on the story. The Ikari Warriors end up finding out who uh, organized the tournament. And that would be Rugal. Rugal's kids, sorry, I paused there. Yes, he he has children. Rugal has children. Someone <laughs> bred with an insane Rugal man reproduced? like Rugal. It's like that scene from Jack X Combat. You reproduced? What? <laughs> That's what I remember when Ron revealed this to me. Like, whoa, fuck, I forgot Rugal had kids. Yep. <laughs> blows yeah. my mind. Still blows my mind. He has a daughter and he has a son. His daughter's name is Rose, which explains the R, by the way. Mm. And uh, his son's name is Adelaide. Huh. So the deal here is that they're both rich and they live on this giant floating uh, ship called the Sky Noah. It's like an airship or something. And uh, they're filthy rich. Of course it's called the Sky Noah, by the way. Yeah, it's a reference to Rugal's ship. Uh, actually, I'll just show you. Rose. Bernstein. Rose with enemies. There we go. So here's Rose. There's a thing about Rose. She's a bitch. Ah! Oh, <laughs> looks like it. Also, well done. Oh. I like the design. It's a it's a cute design. It's like, what if Karen was more uh, uh, doesn't fight? I guess. Oh, I love the bow too. It was a bitch. Anyway. The fuck? That's fucking Maribel hair right there, though. Yeah, I can see that. And uh, here's her brother. Mr. Adelaide. Definitely takes after Rugal. That skin, though. I think it's more the art style, because he has art where he has a uh, lighter skin. Ah. Yeah. Why does his hair remind me of Edgeworth a little bit? Uh... Yeah, kinda. I see more Vaughn, to be honest. Hmm. The stripper shirt. The stripper yeah. shirt. <laughs> he got it back. He inherited it from his dad. So the thing about Adelaide and uh, Rose is that Adelaide is more the combatant while Rose sets up tournaments. Hmm. And uh, like his father, he's looking for worthy opponents to fight. Ah. Only this time he doesn't have a statue collection. But 
thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Adelhaid ends up fighting the Ikari Warriors, who make it to the finals. And he's the final opponent. And, uh, he ends up, uh, actually losing to the Ikari Warriors. Oh. Uh, much to Rose's discontent. Rose was so salty about it, she said, Oh, screw you guys. I'm gonna blow up our ship and take you with us. <laughs> like father, like children. Yeah, but Adelheid, actually, who is not a sore loser, mm. stands up and is like, Wait, sister, they must live. But why? But they beat you, brother. A loss is a loss, and I will take that L. <laughs> So yeah, unlike his dad, he knows how to accept loss graciously. <laughs> or gracefully. So, uh... Adelheid inherited the fighting techniques of his father. While, uh, his uh, sister inherited his sore loser aspects. <laughs> Which actually shows in f battle, actually, uh... Adelaide's moveset is very identical to Rugal's. With the exception of Genocide Cutter and uh, Kaiser Wave, those are uh, actually his supers. Not, not mm -hmm. as good as his Pappy. Yeah, not quite there yet. Also, as a side note, uh, the game tells you that Adelaide is the second protagonist of this particular subseries. Hmm. I kind of disagree, because he doesn't really do much. <laughs> ah, damn. Like, he gets involved with the uh, KOF 13 story. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, excuse me. Aw, oh, Sundari Dad. He's Sundari. watching me. But sir, our men are dying. I'm watching. Okay, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Yeah, they say Adelheid is the uh, other protagonist to Ash, but uh, I disagree because he doesn't do much. He does have a role in KOF 13, but uh, here's the kicker. He's never playable in the series. Oh. Cap skill. Which is criminal because Rugal's moveset sounds like fun. Ah. Uh. No, I, I'd like to make an argument that there's another character that should be the second protagonist, and we'll see her next game. So, uh, back to the other part of the story. Uh, K-Dash ends up running into Kusanagi, who uh, challenges uh, K-Dash's team. Oh boy. But K-Dash beats him because Kusanagi's a fucking clown. <laughs> And when he does, uh, he ends up running into a possessed, uh, Chizuru. Who ends up making an after-image of her sister. And, uh, they fight K-Dash's team, and they lose, because they are also choppers. <laughs> but when they lose, you get one more boss. Oh boy. And that boss happens to be Mukai. This let me see how I can find a picture of it, actually. It's pretty crazy. Oh, no. Uh, oh, he's even crazier than I remembered. Holy oh, shit. Uh, feels me with confidence. The wrong kind of confidence. There's the dude. Oh, it's oh my god. Oh, Jesus. That's like... That's like Asura. It looks like Asura's it is Rath. Sarah's Wrath character. Yeah. Swoody, yeah. I'm coming for the booty. So Mukai shows up and says, Hey, I am part of a group called Those from the Past. <laughs> and then Chaos is like, Excuse me? Yeah, Those from the Past. Uh, we're uh, mysterious Pete Beans who uh, are after Orochi for some reason. My boss is Saki, or I think it's his name. Psyche? I think it's Psyche, yeah, Psyche. My boss is Psyche, and he wishes to gain Orochi's power for his own means. Uh, that basically means we're in the subscription manual. Mm. Okay, that's so like, well, I'm not down with that. So they fight, and a uh, little thing about those from the past, uh, the group is made up of like 12 members. None of them are playable. <laughs> 
Oh, damn. Like, all of them are just, like, character designs for the sake of character designs. <laughs> Which is weird, because they do cool stuff in the story. Like, one of the members brainwashes Shizuru. Uh, two of the members screw with Hyder directly. And two more members attack Kyo on his own, but they get scared and run off as Kyo is fucking Kyo. <laughs> like, they, they do cool stuff in the story, they're just not on the roster for some reason. With the exception of, uh, Psyche. Spoilers. But anyway, Kadash and his team end up being Mukai. And, uh, Mukai's all like, oh well, shit, you guys are really strong. I guess I gotta tell my boss to watch out for you guys. You're kill, right? And then Kadash gets furious. And then they leave, and uh, the next see the next scene, we see uh, Chizuru approaching Kyo and Iori, all injured, and she's all like, "Why didn't you listen? <laughs> you should have listened. You could have prevented this." <laughs> and Kyo's like, "Oh, jeez, I'm 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 sorry." I and before uh, anything else could be said, uh, Chizuru tries to reassemble the seal on Orochi, basically. <sighs> Which is broken. It's not completely broken because he can't get out yet, but it's it's breaking a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she tries to do that, but before she does, Ash shows up and is all like, "Hey, um, I'm gonna need you to not do that." By the way, can I have this mirror? No. Well, I'm taking it anyway. And he knocks out Shizuru and forcibly takes her mirror. And Kyo is all like, "Dude, what the fuck?" And uh, Ash is like, "Well, I'm uh." I'm sorry, but I'm working for those from the past, so I'm gonna have to take your treasures. But not right now, Yori scares me. <sighs> so he ends up disappearing. And Yori and Kyo both promise revenge when they both see Ash next time. So he heel turns and leaves, got it. <sighs> yeah. So Ash's whole thing is that he uh, works from those from the past, and he's basically uh, an agent, an active agent, I would say. He's going around causing chaos for the uh, tournament. And that's why he's the protagonist, because a lot of the focus on the big events revolves around him. Eh. So he's not exactly the hero, but he is the focus. Alright, see you later, bro. Alright. See you, Dan! <laughs> As a result, uh, Duolong gets suspicious of his activity and ends up leaving his team by the end of the game. Mm. Uh, Shenwu stays though because Shenwu loves to fight and doesn't care. <laughs> so I think that covers everything in that game. Um, the next game, uh, this is where things get even weirder. Oh boy. So, this is the first KOF game, well not the first one, but it's definitely an example that, uh, the teams, the usual teams are not, uh, they're not what they normally are. Let's see. Like, the Fatal Fury team, it's basically just Terry at this point. Aw, <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> but, he did bring in two friends, he brought in Kim and, uh, Duck King of all people. Fucking Duck King! Yeah, Duck oh, King shit. is a whole Fatal Fury character that uh, basically got lost to the dregs of time, but they brought him back for this game. And Kim's here because, uh, well, his disciples basically begged him to take a vacation. Good con. <laughs> The Art of Fighting team is made up of Ryo, <clears throat> King, and Yuri. Robert had to go help his dad with the project, and uh, Mai's all like, oh, I'm gonna go help Andy now. And she uh, leaves Yuri and uh, King to Ryo. So there's no women's fighter team. Um, and here's the weirdest part, Kyo and Iori actually form a team willingly together. After the last game, they were like, um, maybe we shouldn't fight each other this time around. We gotta, at least not while Ash is running around. 
And then Yori's all like, okay, fine, we'll form a team. <laughs> but we're gonna need one more person, you know? Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, let's see, uh, Diamond's a little busy. Benny Mara, I have no idea where Benny Mara is. Hey, Shingo, you wanna join our football team? And Shingo is ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we have a team with Kyo, Yori, and Shingo. The team that has... You, you don't worry about it, everything is fine. As for uh, Benny Maru, um, the reason why you can't join the team this time is because he's joining another team called the Rivals Team. Who uh, has him duel on and is led by a new character Finder. Yeah, there she is. There. <clears throat> Elizabeth. Oh, that's cool. Now that yeah. definitely looks like something out of a Phoenix Wright character, Phoenix Wright uh, game. Yeah, uh, she's actually Ash's uh, adoptive sister, I guess. Huh. <clears throat> uh, they're definitely re related. That's friends sure. like you. That's the same feel I was getting. Yeah, yeah, it's friend. Except she's not as uh, sadistic as her, I think. <laughs> So Elizabeth is the character I would put as a case as she would be the second protagonist. Because a lot of her actions revolve around locating Ash, going for Ash. Uh, she's technically not as involved with the plot as Adelaide, but she is in a way, I think. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, wait, what? But uh, I'll, uh, I'll clarify when I go along. So Elizabeth forms a team because uh, she's looking for Ash. And uh Wow. Oh, this is 67, I can't bother playing it. She's looking for Ash and uh, she's curious about his whereabouts. She ends up recruiting Benny Maru and uh Duolon, like especially Duolon, because uh, he thinks he he was uh, the one with Ash last. And speaking of Ash, he joins the tournament once again with uh, his own team, with Shen Wu back on, on his side. And he ends up hiring an assassin of all people to join them. Assassin. And it's, it's this smooth motherfucker named Roswell. Yeah. Good dog. Let's see, where is he? Oh shit, am I wrong on his name? I might be wrong on his name. Uh oh. Aww. Oh no, I've screwed up. Oh, let's see. Ash Crimson. I could probably get it through that his name. Or someone could just tell me in chat. Someone might know in chat. Probably. Come on, fast enough. Oswald? Oswald. I think you're right. Yeah, Jade. Thanks for Jade for that. I don't know why I thought of Roswell. I guess it's not too far apart. Uh, yes, he is the main character throughout this whole thing. Because he is still causing havoc. Mm. I guess you would call him a villain in that case, but, you know, I'm just going by what the developer said. Hi, Dedu. Uh, yeah, it's kind of Dedu's grandpa. <laughs> Oswald is pretty sick. He is actually Gambit of all people. He uses cards to uh, fight people. He's also incredibly annoying to fight against in KOF 14. Ah, uh, damn. He's like top tier. Cough, so a challenge. So, uh, the next tournament starts. Uh, uh, my memory's a little foggy on this one. Let me see if I can jump on my memory. 
<clears throat> it kind of proceeds a little similarly to the last one, except uh, this tournament's a little, uh, it's hosted by this really weird guy named, uh, oh my god, I think his name is Magaki. Yes, I got it on the first try. Yeah, Magaki is another member of those from the past. I have to rewind it a little bit. And the TLDR of this tournament is um, near the end, uh, a, lo a lot of shit doesn't really happen in this game. It's kind of an in between thing. Near the end, uh, we fight this androgynous male named, uh, Shiki, I think that was his name. Let me see if I'm correct on that one. Nope, I am wrong. I am thinking of Shiki from Samurai Showdown. Who <laughs> <laughs> is not androgynous after, uh, at all, she is very much a female. Yeah, I'm just gonna go to the page. King of Fighters 11. I am sorry, guys. Oh. Ooh, Whoa. Nice dodge. Not Actually, Terran soldier. This would be the point where uh, they stop naming them after uh, after years, by the way, because they're not doing yearly releases. Let him go, goddamn. Shion, thank you. Chief Uzuki? Chief Uzuki. Uh, wait, better wait. him than uh, Ava. I'm, I'll, t I'll take that. Unfor oh, no, unfortunately. That... Though the wiki doesn't have anything on Shion, are you serious? Ah, damn. Shion, King of Fighters. Muscle, let's go. I guess that game was just that weird. <laughs> I figured 12 would be the one KOF fans wanted to bury. Not 11. Uh, uh, 11's a little weird. The yeah, S Saga is weird in general. I found a victim for five good position to be in. Rising now! Uh oh. Okay, yeah, you're in three. So, if they die, does that affect anything? No. Yeah. Okay. Oh damn, that's... I like that spear. Yeah, um, he uses the spear in combat. That's a really cool design. It's kinda neat. Like, Falcon... I think this is Falcon. But, uh, he, he kinda... he's a little similar to Nomura, in my opinion, where when he designs well, he designs well, but when he doesn't, it ends up very ugly. Yeah. <sighs> So, Shion's the final, well, not the final boss, he's the second to last boss. Let me find the other guy, just to get him pretty prepped. Actually, let me think of one of the ugly, uh, Kate designs if I can. Oh, right, here we go, okay. So, Shion blocks, uh, the way of the victors, so, I think, I think Elizabeth would be the one. Given how uh, her ending goes, I could be wrong though. So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna assume it's a ghost bit team. It doesn't really matter anyway, because there's no cutscenes of the other teams other than their endings. So she ends up losing, and uh, Shion's boss shows up. Uh, weird thing, by the way, they make a portal, and this portal ends up absorbing Shion like. Uh, like a vacuum. Mm. And, uh... Yeah, Shion's spear can turn into uh, a chain. It's pretty cool. And out steps up out his boss, uh, Magaki, who is another member from those up from the past. Mm. Yeah, normal looking guy. The normal finger quotes. Yeah. So Magaki shows up and he's all like, um, well, 
this is this is interesting. I didn't expect you guys to win, but uh, hey, I really want to reach his power, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna offer you guys as a tribute to the Orochi. And they're like, what? <laughs> before, before anything could happen, Magaki transforms into this. Three times oh. over, grant me power! It's basically Majin Buu. Yeah, that's a yeah. Majin Buu. Yeah, that looked like Super Buu. Yeah. This fight is also bullshit because it's basically a shmup in between the fight. Just your parenting. <laughs> so up throw yeah, it's a common thing with bets and K bosses where they just throw bullshit everywhere. Magaki's that guy. Mm. But if you manage to win, uh, Magaki's all like, "Wow, okay, I underestimated you guys. I'm gonna leave now." <sighs> and uh. He opens his portal, he turns around and points at us all like, uh, don't, don't, don't be, uh, so sure that this is the end. I'll be back and I will take my revenge. Aha. Uh -huh. Before he could leave, a spear flies from the portal through his chest and impales him. Gord. Uh, basically, Shion wasn't happy about that. And, uh, he ends up dying. <laughs> So, as for noteworthy endings, uh, let's see. There are two that come to mind. Well, three, technically, but the third one's kind of a funny one. Oh. Actually, four. Yeah, there's four endings that actually do matter. So the story is all in the endings, which is kind of funny. <clears throat> so I guess I'll go over Kyo's ending first, uh, Kyo's team. Basically, Kyo, Yori, and Shingo are alone together, but uh, since Magaki's messing with the Orochi, Orochi powers are rising again. And that means Yori gets crazy because his bridal blood activates. Mm. So he ends up uh, beating the shit out of Kyo. <laughs> and Kyo's too surprised to do much about it. And uh, he really wants him dead, but Shingo the big bro that he is, gets in Yori's way and takes all the punishment. Ah. Uh. Jingo get, takes every blow just trying to protect Kyo, and he's all like, oh, no, don't don't kill Kyo, and then Yori's like, I must kill. No, don't kill. And it gets very, uh, it's very crazy. Speaking of crazy, this, this particular bit of lore here, the Widow's Vengeance, if a Tyrrhenian is slain, the culprit is brought to trial. The surviving spouse can choose to decide the culprit's punishment. Jesus. And pretty much anything goes. <laughs> oh my god. 200 lashings, broken arms and legs, death by firing squad. All Jesus. viable. Makes you think twice of going too far, doesn't it? <laughs> Fuck. Thanks for the blue gem. Give you that. Nah, I'm sure that's not important. Yep. Randomly gives you a blue gem out of that, too. Here's how gotcha. our capital punishment system works. By the way, have money. Yep. What? <laughs> hey, man, he, he just wanted to talk about politics. I think you skipped A to B and just jumped straight to H. What the hell? No no one wants to talk to the dude, so he's all like, hey, you know, you're good people. Thank you for listening. Hey, finally, some strength time. and speed. Hot. Ooh. I thought marriage has a punishment. God. <laughs> God. Nice. That's a good one. So, uh, basically, Kyo and Shingo are getting beat the fuck up. Shingo's all like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta do something. And then Ash shows up. Ash is like, hey, you guys are having a little bit of problems, aren't you? Uh, kind of. I could do something if you want. Uh, sure? Yeah, watch this. This is gonna be fun. So, Ash comes behind, uh, Iori. Mm. So, my throat, hang on. He appears behind Iori, he slams his hand through his back, and uh, Iori just falls over unconscious, and Ash is holding uh, Iori's sacred treasure, the Yasakani Jewel. So if you guys remember, Iori's clan made a pact with the, with the Orochi. 
Okay, your speed. I have to watch that later. And uh, basically, he was his sacred treasure was corrupted, and uh, that's why his flames are purple, and uh, why he has that curse. And that's what the Atakani jewel is. And uh, oh. And Ash has it now. And because he has it, he has the ability to use fire. Huh. Yeah. Also, uh, because he has Chizuru's mirror, he also has the ability to teleport. Huh. Oh, that does remind me, actually, because Ash is here. Um, that means his team is not. I just remember what happened to his team. Uh, basically, Ash doesn't like being tied down to teams, that's why he kind of has uh, special circumstances set up around him. But he needs to get a team to get into KOF, but after things are said and done, um, he takes care of him somehow. Or he wanted to take care of this one anyway. So that's why Oswald is here. Oswald is an assassin, you see. Who is he going to assassinate? Um, his other teammates. <laughs> Ash is all like, yeah, Shen Wu, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to fight Oswald here, because I don't really need you anymore. Wait, what? And then he leaves. And, it, and then Shen Wu is pissed off about it. And ends up fighting Oswald to the death. But neither of them actually die. Thankfully. So Ash ends up getting the jewel, but before he leaves, uh, he's confronted by Elizabeth's team. And the reason why I think uh, Elizabeth won was because, oh, Ash is all like, oh, shouldn't you be celebrating? <laughs> and Elizabeth's all like, well, I just wanted to find you here. What the fuck are you doing, brother? And then they see Kyo, Iori, and Shingo all unconscious. And uh, Benny Mara is all like, uh, okay, start explaining. <laughs> And Ash is all like, well, I'd love to, but, um, well, we'll see ya. And then he teleports away. And Elizabeth's all like, oh, god damn it, you Ash, you trickster. Let's see, yeah, uh, there's one more ending. Oh, yeah, the Ikari Warrior's ending. So, uh, basically Hydern is having this huge meeting with his squad and uh, a bunch of other people, and all of a sudden two people from those from the past show up, <clears throat> and they steal his eye patch, which is really rude. Mm. And they also blow up his ship. But they're still somehow not playable on the roster. Oh, Love look it. at what Jade put in, um, put in chat. It's a good one. They're even willing to delete anyone's copy of Project M from an SD card completely free. Ah, good old hard times. That's a good one. Stars. Oh, how nice of you guys. Good old hard times. <laughs> I don't know if I'm glad or not that Luna still has a Rishikau's hit rate in this game. But at least it's still better than Blatmo's version of Luna, which is literally just FE7 Luna. Mm. So, Rishikiyao's hit rate of obscene 20 crit. Because, you know, that's fun. Also, there's it's a little bit crackly, right? I noticed that. Yeah, What's Sondra that? Aren't. The Sonder Arn is a little crackly. Oh. Did it switch again from... Hold on. Yeah, it did. Switch from source. Why is he doing that? There we there. go. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Where are you at, Ron? Uh, just about done, actually. Uh, ah. I only have a joke ending to go through. Oh, man. So the joke ending is uh, the Fatal Fury one, actually. Oh, man. Uh, basically, after the tournament, uh, Terry, Kim, and uh, Duck King go to the Pow Pow Cafe. 
and uh, Kim ends up getting drunk. Oh, Jesus. And the problem is, when Kim gets drunk, no one can stop his tirade. Ah, so, if I make a reference from a show you guys don't like, it's basically Rock Lee from Naruto. Whenever he has, uh, whenever he gets drunk. Oh, the oh I thought you were just gonna style. call him a boomer. Anyway. Oh, jeez, no. The drunken fighter style, I remember that. <laughs> uh, I don't dislike Naruto. In fact, I actually kind of like some of the stuff in Naruto. I just never really saw it. Yeah, I, Naruto was basically my childhood. I admit, like, some of the earlier episodes not age well and Shippuden has a lot of issues to it, but... Um, still... I'm more of a Bleach guy myself, but I understand the appeal. Hmm. So, Kim, when he's drunk, uh, he ends up going on his huge uh, rant about justice and all that. You know, it's uh, what he does. And it got to the point where uh, Joe, Andy, and Mai show up to try to help out, but even they couldn't help out. And uh, eventually, Chang and Choi show up and they're like, eh, just, just leave him to the owner. He'll exhaust himself out, I guess. <laughs> so... All of Kim's friends leave him with the uh, Pow Pow Cafe's owner. And Kim's just in a corner, just slobbing away and uh, completely mumbling to himself about justice. <sighs> it is very funny. Ooh, nice. Kim is a master ta taekwondo guy, but he can't hold his liquor worth for shit. Yeah. Here's an opportunity to of the Lance Reaver. Okay, Angeal. <laughs> okay, Angeal. I can be pretty cheap. Yeah, no kid. So as a game, um, this King of Fighters is pretty weird. Eleven's really weird. Like, uh, it plays very strangely from what I hear, and, uh, it doesn't look too clean either. But it is kind of at the tail end of uh this is basically one of the last I think this is basically one of the last games that uh, they released for uh, the end. Before the so end. What? The well end? SNK unfortunately gets bankrupt. Aww. Well they got bankrupt before this point, but uh they almost got bankrupt again and that kinda made the series go dormant for a while. Mm. But not this but not quite yet. We're not quite there yet. Yeah, I know there's like a later one for like PS3, uh, 360. Yeah, that's that's the one unfortunately, but we'll get there very soon. Yeah, I heard I when I still watch TV, I watched a I watched a review of it and well, I'll let you cover that whenever it comes. Uh oh, I got a lot of good things about to say about 13, but there's just oh. one unfortunate flaw about it. Ah, uh, I think I know what that flaw is too from what I remember that review. Yeah, 12 on the other hand, uh, that's the game that uh, everyone wants to forget about. Aw, oh, damn. 12 yeah. shit! 12 is shit. There is no story in 12. Aw, oh, damn. Uh, basically, uh, the best way to put 12 is that it is a prototype of 13. It's <sighs> using a new system, it's using new sprites, using new... new everything, basically. So it's Same like Epic 6, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, the problem is, even though it looks pretty, the camera's way too close. Uh, it doesn't play very well either. The fact that there's no story kind of cuts it. Yeah, 12. Yes, 12 does have an English dub. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's how you know this game is quality. <laughs> and is it Chaos Wars bad, though? Uh, it's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. SNK almost never does dubs for the... For these games, uh, the closest thing you can think of is Maximum Mi Impact. Maximum and, uh, Impact. <laughs> I guess that's another game I could cover real quick, but uh, it's not worth covering. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I think we're almost done with the uh, map, anyways. <laughs> I'll, I'll just TLDR though. Maximum Impact is uh, basically their attempt at Tekken, basically a 3D. Oh. Player. And uh, it has all the new characters all, with uh, some old favorites. It's in an alternate universe, so the story doesn't matter to the current one. Mm. Uh, it's very shit. Like, it plays very weird. It's kind of a acquired taste, I think. Mm. And it also has an English dub. Every character has it up. Ah, damn. How is this one, yeah. though? Uh, kind of. 
Not good. <laughs> this is early 2000s English voice acting, so... I wanna yeah. promote Corbin. I... Nice. Okay. Yeah, we're nearing the end of our SNK talk, though. It's got a little bit left, like... Or King of Fighters yeah. talk, rather. Yeah, the King of Fighters talk. Um, all the character designs are really weird, too. There, there's one character I do kind of like, though, and that's Alva. Unfortunately, he's way back down by the fact that his brother is a, uh, random-ass cowboy. Hmm. Ah, uh, damn. Who also does capoeira? I don't know. Oh, you tempted me again with all the crystals. Oh, you tempted me. You tempted me something fierce. <laughs> Remember the Iron Axes, you're Yes, uh, Fio is playable. I already got my Iron Axes, I'm good. Fio from, uh, Metal Slug is playable in Maximum Impact. Fio is best girl, anyway. It's funny. Anyway, uh, I'll close the lid on that one. So, King of Fighters 13. Now, that's the, uh, final game in the Ash Saga. And for the longest time, it was also the last King of Fighters game, until 14 came out. Hmm. And, uh, let's see... Uh, it's a much needed improvement over 12. It's- it has the same sprite work, but it actually pulled the camera back, so you can actually see shit. And, uh, it, it controls much better, too. It also has a story mode. It also has an arcade mode. And online. It has all this really cool shit that they all put a lot of time and effort into. King Fighters 13 is a really great game, guys. There's only two flaws with it. Oh boy. The first is that they didn't sell it at all. Ah. Like, unfortunately, with all the effort they put into this game, uh, it didn't sell at all, and that's basically the reason why SNK almost went bankrupt again, and why the series went dormant for a long time. You know what? That always makes me fucking sad when something has all this polish and effort put into it, but it doesn't sell at all. Well, yeah. The of 12 being shit, but you know. Well, 13, King of Fighters is kind of a niche title anyway, or at least it was back then. Now it's kind of a different story, but, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'd imagine nowadays. There, uh, some, someone put it best is that 13 was ahead of its time, like, I don't think the world was ready for it. Because, uh, the other flaw about 13 is, it has all this really cool shit, all this, these crazy mechanics, but the learning curve is really steep if you want to get really good at it. Oh. That's actually not what I was expecting. Like, com competitive-wise, it's just as fast as Melee, I would argue. It's huh. pretty insane. I've seen competitive stuff on it, and it's really great. Cheese plus three speed, plus three res. FE FE7 in general games have always been abs absurdly hot. Mm. So yeah, now I can use bows, and that's cool. <laughs> Jade. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right, Jay, you know, who's, who the fuck is Terry Bogard? Anyway. Oh. Lol. What's it is word? a little more niche. It is, it is still kind of niche, but it's better than it used to be. So, what was I, what was I think? Oh, yeah. So, 13. Um. So, the story this time around is, uh, fucking, those in the past are at it again. This time they bring lost Rose of all people. And they had her host another tournament. And uh, this is the basically the big tournament to end them all. This is basically where they're gonna revive a road sheet. Hmm. And uh, Ash once again is in here, but this time he's on his own. And Shen Wu joins uh, Elizabeth's team. Uh, this is basically where they. Uh, where they bring back all the old teams, and uh, the Fatal Fury team is all back together. Joe, Andy, and Terry. Team Japan is all back together. Kyo, Benny Maru, and Daimon. And uh, Iori, strangely enough, has his old two friends back. Um, Mature and Vice, who were supposed to be dead. Apparently, Mature and Vice have the ability to uh, project themselves from hell. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, the old art of fighting team is back together, so uh, Ryo, Takuma, and Robert. The women's fighter team is back together, which is uh, King, Mai, and Yuri. The, the Akari Warriors are back together, fucking uh, Clark, Ralph, and Leona. Yeah, a lot of fan favorites are back. Uh, Shen Wu actually joins Elizabeth's team with Duolon, because they're still looking for Ash, and Shen Wu this time was burned, so he's pissed off. Oh yeah, uh, Kim is actually uh, not back with his students, unfortunately. He's back with two other characters. That would be Raiden and uh, Hua Jai from Fatal Fury 1. <laughs> Terry Bogard versus Hua Jai. Versus Berserker. Hua Jai is the other kickboxer other than Joe, who uh, actually has an I'm going to get drunk and beat you up mechanic. God. Yeah. And Raiden is also from the same game. He's this big uh, wrestler who is apparently Australian, from what I've learned. I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I believe that's the majority of it. Oh, no, no, there's Athena, Kenso, and Chin's back. Good old Chin. For so Ron, when are we going to talk about Kenso's training from hell? Oh god, um... That's, um, a, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a story. That is a story. Actually, quick uh, side comment, uh, or side question. Uh, Ron, have you heard of the Neo Geo uh, Mini? I have, yeah. Hmm, okay. Cause I, I actually just learned about that uh, yesterday, or the other day. I don't know much about it, but I know it's a thing. Yeah, I know it's a thing too. Same, actually. Same, basically about that. Uh, apparently, from what I've heard, it's not that great, but it, it has the fact that it exists at all is pretty neat, at least. Yeah. Has the other big SNK series, uh, Metal Slug. Yeah, Metal, Metal Slug. Slug. Yeah. So, tournament starts up proper. Uh, there's a story mode, which basically goes through all the, uh, ins and outs of, uh, the story, of course. Uh, Adelaide is front and center, and once again, un in the background, still not playable. Hi. <laughs> and he does a lot of, uh, talks with Hyder. Oh, now they got to get, now they have to get involved. Yeah. All these guys. Oh lordy. Yeah, kill him, what a scrub. So he gets a lot in the background, talks with Hyder, and um, the, those from the past do stuff in the background. But the, the weird thing about the story mode is, while it is all cool and shit, uh, you can get the general basis from arcade mode, which is what I kind of got. So near the end of the tournament, uh, those from the past make their move again. Uh, they somehow stop time when Rose is congratulating the winners. Mm. And uh, Psyche shows up. I can, I can actually show what Psyche looks like now because he's actually in this game. Psyche can fighters. Excuse me. There we go. It's like he. Oh. Yeah, this is our uh, final boss of the of the uh, storyline. The final boss, I guess, for uh, King of Fighters. Oh, currently. Well, actually, no, not currently. There's verse, but I'll get into verse later. Um, oh boy. So, interesting thing about thirteen. Actually, I just remembered is that Psyche is a mid boss. Like you can fight this guy before the final boss. Huh. There's another Psyche, um, basically. Actually, I can show you this guy. Uh, well, actually, no, I can't because uh, there's another mid boss I have to explain, and that's Billy. Billy. Billy is a mid-boss you can run into during uh, KOF 13. 
and uh, he's here on his own, and he's not here under orders from Geese, he's here because he just wants to get even with Terry. Yeah, sounds like me. <laughs> Unfortunately, Billy is very much uh, nerfed in this game as he usually, uh, from u his usual thing, because unfortunately his his uh, staff it has a it has a hitbox. A very yeah. nasty hitbox. Oh damn. Yeah, the one the type that goes two ways. Like usually, if his cane if his staff doesn't have a hitbox, then uh, he's really crazy. But if if he can get hurt. Then, uh, that's a different story. Well, no, you can unlock Psyche as well, I believe. Uh, speaking of which, uh, near the end of the tournament, uh, Psyche and Mukai start talking when they're in front of you guys. Mukai's all like, hey, I can handle these guys, don't worry, Psyche. And Psyche turns around and kills Mukai. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And he's all like, bitch, don't tell me what to do, I'm handling them. So Psyche's all like, you know what, Orochi's gonna need a little more power, so we're gonna have to fight. He's gonna need more quantum power! So Psyche turns into this. Oh. And he's a pretty bullshit final boss. I see. <laughs> so you fight this dude, and if you win, um, he's all like, well... Uh, that was fun, and but he doesn't look very much. He doesn't look very phased. He's like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to take this to the next level. But before he does, Ash appears behind Psyche, and uh, basically kills him and takes his soul. And Ash is all like, oh, I've been waiting for this. I was hoping your guard would get down at some point. So basically, Ash double crossed him, and that's the the whole purpose of his uh of him skulking around in the background. Huh. That he wanted to wait for a moment for Psyche to, uh, basically have a moment of weakness that he can take advantage of and take on. Because, uh, I guess Ash is a good guy after all. <laughs> Behold, face turn. Why? But unfortunately, um, Ash, uh, when Ash took his soul, uh, Psyche was all like, Oh, hey, uh, I'm gonna take your body now, Ash. Wait, what? <laughs> so Ash is possessed by Psyche. And, uh... Fucking shaman Jesus. Yeah, and good news to everyone who hates Ash, you finally get a chance to kick his ass. Because he's you the final boss die. now. Yeah, uh, it's Dark Ash. And he's, uh, basically, uh, a schmuck boss. Dark Ash from Battle Frontier, yeah. anyways. So you end up fighting Ash, and, uh, if you manage to win, uh, the ending happens. And what happens is, is Ash and Psyche are on the other side of a gate that leads to, uh, Orochi. It's, it's kind of like Kingdom Hearts. I don't know what, how we got here, but... <laughs> There's a fucking gate that leads to, like, this extra plane of existence, and Psyche and Ash are in front of there. <sighs> and Psyche's all like, hey, Ash, um, I'm not in control of your body anymore, but could you be a friend and walk us through the gate so we can, uh, live? What? Because if, they, if the gate closes, which it is right now, uh, they basically, uh, disappear forever. Huh. Yeah. Basically, uh, Ash's whole thing is that he wants to rewrite history so that Psyche never existed, and this is how he's gonna do it. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So, uh, Psyche's all like, uh, walk through the gate, please, otherwise we're gonna die. And Ash, no, seriously, if you don't walk through the gate, we're both toast. Ash, you idiot, walk through the gate. Holy shit, Ash. Oh my god, it's closing. It has just closed. Why are we still here? <laughs> And then Ash just turns him while like, well, I accomplished my goal. See you later. 
Sounds like that legitimately just sounds like an abridged script you're reading from right now. So oh, I am kind of catching it. And then yeah, that's where the joke comes from. <laughs> so Psyche ends up vanishing, and Ash vanishes with him because uh, he decided to stay. <laughs> and uh, that's basically it. The uh, the world is safe, and uh, those from the past don't exist anymore because Ash rewrote them out. And consequently himself. Mm. Yeah, Psyche is Ash's ancestor as well. So if Psyche goes, so does he. Huh. And uh, as a result, everyone in the world forgot about this. Like, this basically was an event that never happened. Oh, so it's Schrodinger's Ash. Yeah. Except Elizabeth remembers Ash. Because her bond with him is too strong, I guess. What the fuck is this Disney level bullshit? <laughs> you. K KOF plots got really weird after the Rosie saga, unfortunately. <laughs> oh god, it's Sonic 06. <laughs> it is Sonic 06, actually. God damn it. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, the Ash Saga. <laughs> also, Iori gets his flames back, and Chizuru gets her mirror back, yay. Hey. Don't worry, Ron, everything's gonna happy. Everything's gonna happy. Everything will be Daijobu. So, uh, the, after that, um, no King of Fighters for the next few years. Because, uh, the company had to sort of withdraw for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ironic, isn't it? This all reminds me, like, not necessarily overall, but in, at least outside Japan, the fucking Dragon Quest series. Like, after... I guess you can count either Joker 2, Monsters Joker 2, or Fortune Street as the one, but after that, we didn't get a new DQ game to, like, from 2011 to 2016. Almost, yeah. So, there's one more thing about the Ass Saga that I forgot to mention. Like, despite, despite the fact that Ash's efforts were very, uh... This, despite the fact that he succeeded, he also unfortunately did something that, uh... isn't so good. Oh. And, uh, that will be left to King of Fighters 14 and whatever the fuck comes after that. <laughs> when does 14 come out? Uh, like... I want to say three years ago? Let's see, King of Fighters 14. It's on the PS4. It was released in 2016. Okay, so four years ago. And uh, that's about it. I will say I'm very glad that SNK made a comeback. Because uh, King Fighter 14 is pretty good. And Samurai Showdown, a lot of people love Samurai Showdown. Samurai Showdown is her other fighting series. Hmm. Also, I see Mel is, uh, in general, uh, doing a good old debate on FFT being the best FF game. I think she's just trolling spirit. I I wouldn't put it past her if she thought uh, FFT was her favorite though. War of the Lions. Uh yeah, the the first FFT or War of the Lions. Yeah, uh, well it is her favorite. Yeah. Hmm. I wasn't sure if that or FF Seven was. speed. That looks like a good uh, level 2 class change. Yep. It's almost the map below. It's just this corner. I have to take care of the bosses, which I'm pretty close to, but they keep pumping out reinforcements. <laughs> they should stop after a while, though. Uh, let me see if I have a proper list. Yeah. Uh, after turn 10, which I think just happened. No more. Okay. Hmm. 
lot of damage for a light grab. Yeah, it's different in this game. <clears throat> okay, how did it work again? Uh, it does full magic damage all the time, and it can crit regardless of range. Okay. Oh lord, what does that animation look like? I need to know now. That guy. Is it just like... The sword glows? So is Rance's dad still watching? Hasn't moved a muscle. Wow. Patiently wait for 25 turns before taking to the battlefield. What a memer. Oh, these level ups are... Mm. These are just so good for our feelings right now. Ow. Oh, at least people are dying. God, uh... I really do like the weapon uh, sprites in this game, or icons, I should say. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, I know Josh is also a, a, a huge fucking fan of uh, custom-made uh, weapons, weapon icons. Like the Wind Edge, uh, yes, Mark, the Wind Edge is in this game. Uh, the light brand also looks really cool, which are funny enough both magic swords. Uh, Arm bow also looks neat. I think there's enough time to go through Fatal Fury 1, maybe 2. Hmm. I, I did also want to compare it to the OVA a little bit. Short Spear also looks great, goddamn. <clears throat> we just have that boss left, right? I think so. Mm. Alright, we killed ropes, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. So, Fatal Fury is, uh... Just in case, first fighting game series. Oh man. And, uh, one of their first games in general, actually. Basically, it stars, uh, our favorite dude, Terry Bogart. I know him, he's that guy from Smash Brothers, right? Yeah, he's, uh, Ken with a hat. Oh, Rubs is alive up there. Any boy. Oh, damn. Good, good level, good level. Go, Aaron. Now, I can't remember if Fatal Fury was made by, uh... No, I think it was... Uh... Actually, no. Yeah, I think uh, Fatal Fury was made from, uh... Former Capcom employees. Oh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I remember hearing uh, about that. That worked on Street Fighter. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about that, too. Yeah, they wanted to uh, make something new and fresh. And uh, it definitely was new and fresh because uh, compared to all other competitors, uh, Terry was very different from Ryu. When did it come out on? Uh, uh, Neo Geo, right? That is correct. Neo okay. Geo. Right. So Terry, uh, this is basically his story of how he was in an orphan with his... Uh, brother Andy and his story gets retold several times throughout uh, SNK media it's not like my father so basically have you been at a son of an ice cream maker <laughs> so basically Terry and uh Andy are raised by this man named Jeff Bogard, who is a really cool dude. Hmm. 
Well, that would have been awkward. And uh, Jeff basically, Jeff was a martial artist as well in his life, and he fought alongside Keith Howard. Yes, that Geese Howard. Oh man, Geese. Geese. What, Geese? Uh, speaking of which, Geese shows up to uh, Jeff. Pri the pride of Tyrion's over here, by the way. Oh, Max. Yeah, Ryan. that motherfucker survived so much, Jesus. The pride yeah. of Tyrion's. I bet uh, Vance is dead looking over going, hmm, this man deserves a permanent shit. He deserves it more than my son. He deserves it more than my son. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> You know, you're my new son now. Come here. <laughs> you're my new third son. My new son. And Vance just sheds a tear. <laughs> <laughs> he activates tear. <laughs> you are my child now. <laughs> hey, so where were you at? Uh. Geese shows up before Jeff one day, and uh, usually when Geese shows up before Jeff, they're supposed to be on equal footing, but uh, usually there's something that happens to Jeff before the fight that makes him uh, not fair so well against Geese. <clears throat> like uh, in the OVA, he ends up protecting these children from uh, some thugs, and he takes a wound to, uh, I think it was the side. Yeah, yeah, he, he, t he takes a knife to his side. Um, in uh, King of Fighters Destiny, which is an adaption of Fate of Fury 1 as well, uh, he, he says, oh, you have an old injury, you can't fight me with that, can you? And uh, in Fatal Fury Wild Ambition, there is no injury, he just beats him the fuck up. <laughs> Regardless of what happens, Jeff is destined to lose against Geese. And he also dies against Geese. And while he's dying, he uh, gives his son a hat. And he's like, Walk tall, my son. Yeah. Papa, no! Daddy, says Andy. Wait, who cares? <laughs> what, what kind of hat? Um, It's a cap called with Fatal Fury on the front. Ah, that'll drop. <laughs> ah. So, uh... Terry and Andy both swear revenge against uh, Geese because, uh, you know, their dad was murdered. Of course they wouldn't do that. <clears throat> and Andy, uh, Andy's all like, I'm gonna go get Geese right now. And Terry is all like, dude, we're fucking 10. <laughs> if we go to Geese right now, we're gonna die. How about this? Let's uh, meet back here in Southtown in 10 years after we train our asses off. And he's all like, okay. So Andy goes to Japan to train there, while Terry just stays in America. I'm gonna dance. Dance, water, da dance, Lance, dance. Sure, I can use a dance partner. It's 2% crit, by the way. Yep. Yeah, this, this, despite being a help, help birdier, uh, he does not have a, uh, any crit chance. I think it all comes from the spear. Mm. And, you know, half skill, but... Ignore yeah. That. Oh, I think. oh yeah, yeah. Terry travels around America to develop hone his skills there. Uh, he's basically a director at that point. So ten years pass, and the Bogard brothers show back up in Southtown before Jeff Bogard's grave, and they both uh, have a little meeting with each other. Um, in the OVA, there's a character named Tung Fu Ru, who is also a character in the lineup. Also, fun fact, Tung Fu Ru is also a new character in the KOF lineup, thanks to 14. Hmm. Where'd you get your armor? Oh, I oh, stole it off a dead guy. Oh, I mean... <laughs> Love the uh, tutorial. <clears throat> Anyone join my side? Sure. I'm tired of being green. I'm tired of being green. 
<clears throat> That's not the line, I think. But the fact that armor color doesn't really matter in Tellius. Yeah. But discounts are the best way to get around, Lucille. Don't you know the Anatech? Mm. Oh, he was an 11 as a bonus character? Huh, that makes sense. Huh. That's a cool callback. Yeah, so Tung actually has a role in the OVA. Uh, unfortunately. Nice dance! Yeah! Yeah, I'm nice. Well then. I guess here's the last dance. The last dance for stuff in Vance. For some reason, I'm thinking of cameos. Though I'm reminded that Ninja Storm, t Naruto Ninja Storm 2, had a uh, Lars as a playable character from Tekken. Oh yeah, that, that was hilarious. <laughs> I, I loved it. I love Lars's design of that game. It's so goofy. <laughs> and he's the only character not have an English voice. Yeah. I find it even funnier, honestly. Uh, what was I gonna say? That's Tekken for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, he has a role in the OVA, unfortunately he dies in the OVA, but, uh, ah. the OVA is not canon, so. Mm. He's alive in the Fail Fury KOF timeline. That's good. So, Terry and Annie meet each other at the grave, and then they go off to, uh, plan their attack on Geese. But before they do, they run into Joe Higashi. <laughs> Joey Gashi is a Muay Thai kickboxer who came to Southtown for a tournament. And he ends up uh, being friends with Terry Bogard and his brother. Because, uh, oh, Joe's a cool guy. What the heck? Let's all go to Club Med! What do you say? <laughs> I agree. Use your Aki is a cool character, isn't he, Billy? <laughs> huh? I'm just memeing, don't worry. So they end up finding out that Geese is hosting a tournament. And uh, he usually hosts these tournaments. It's the first King of Fighters, by the way. He usually hosts these tournaments to uh, recruit new men to his uh, little bodyguard section. He's looking for strong dudes. Hmm. And uh, Terry and Dandy are all like, hey, we might be able to meet Geese this way. And uh, Terry's like, you know what, you're right. Because if we go in through the front door, we're going to have to deal with an army of bodyguards. And Billy Khan. Billy Khan. Fuck that guy. <laughs> so, Fatal Fury 1 is basically the three of them together entering a tournament. <clears throat> uh, Andy and Terry obviously going in for revenge. And Joe going in to help the Bogard brothers, because, you know, he's a good friend like that. And Fatal Fury 1 is kind of similar to Street Fighter 1 where uh, you only have, like, a very select few playable characters. And you go through, uh, these very strange boss fights. So, uh, eventually they get to the champion who is Billy, and they end up, uh, defeating him, and when they do, uh, Geese is all like, Oh, it's funny, actually, when you win a fight, Geese actually has a comment. And, uh, the more fights you win, the angrier, the angrier he gets. Man, Geese has some quality dialogue, even back, so, back so far in the first game. He's a, he's a very mean <laughs> man in the first game. Oh. <laughs> Alright, Ron, what did you discover? Yeah! I will never forgive you! You <laughs> struck my plan of attack! <laughs> And his next line, but, and his next line is, "I'll beat you like your father ten years ago." Jesus! <laughs> Don't have a screen for screenshot for that though, I imagine. Oh, it's basically the same face. Ah, I. Yeah. That's why I didn't post it. Fair enough. But he gets just angrier and angrier the closer Terry gets to uh, win. <laughs> oh, hold on. Yeah. All the boys die. So, uh, Terry ends up beating Billy. Sorry, oh, Billy. Oh, no. Eh, I was a jobber back then. <laughs> and, uh... Actually, there's another funny picture I want to find. 
Honestly, just remembering like how spirits leaving this caused me to have dreams of him, of me waking up to find him back on Discord. That'd probably just be more of a punishment for me. But you know. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> Oh, um, what were you gonna say? Oh, Beer, does your internet still go away at the end of the month? Is there, I think I remember you saying something like that. Okay. There's a picture. So basically, when you win, you get this. These two guys trying to bring in a geese. <laughs> And at the end of, uh... At the end, the end boss is geese, basically. No surprise. Yeah, it's that music. It's beautiful. So no surprise, geese is fucking insane. He has a counter, he has Rakuken, he has uh, all this shit that you would expect he's at. Well, some of this shit, you know. He doesn't have Deadly Rave. I don't think he has a uh, Raging Storm. But he's still pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't think anyone has their uh, DMs in this one. Since, yeah. since there's no uh, Super Meter or button combination to put them in yet. Mm. Mm. But if you manage to beat Geese, uh, you get... I want to find that picture too, because it's a good one. Thank you, Max, for making this easy for me. Mm -hmm. I'm on the screen. Terry's doing it. And there we go. Alright, let's that picture. I'm posting this in a uh, general FB. I don't know why this. I don't know why this is so funny to me. So there's a picture. Did you get that? When you I think I've seen that before. Yep. I remember this. It's in the Smash trailer. Hmm. Right. And the crazy part is, if you lose against Keith, that's you falling off the tower instead. Enjoy your game uh... over. Damn. But, uh... In case, even if you aren't fighting Geese. <sighs> so Geese drops off the tower, he screams his head off, and, uh... The funny thing is, this game actually records the date when you beat Geese. Like, if you beat him oh. today, uh, it will say, uh, Geese died on, uh... Oh! January 28th. That's cool. But here's the thing, right? Fatal Fury 1 has a Y2K bug in it. Oh! So, uh, it won't say 2000, 2000, uh, 2020. It'll say, uh, 1920. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a more comedical series than, um, well, not than that, but this seems like a comedical series overall than, uh, King of Fighters. Uh, it's definitely more lighthearted. Yeah, that's another way I guess you can put it. A little bit. And Max made a joke that a hundred years ago Terry Bogart kicked Geese Howard off a tower. <laughs> to the day. To the month. Howard's coward kicked Howard off the tower. Anyways. So yeah, that's how Geese dies. Um, so OVA comparisons. Uh, Terry has a girlfriend. Oh, man. It's, girlfriend. it's more of a love interest more than anything. Mm. Uh, her name is Lily. Ah. And, uh, yes, uh, I guess you guys know where this is going. <laughs> 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 so Lily uh, works for Geese, and uh, Geese notices that she's getting close to Terry, and she tries to use it. He tries to use her to uh, poison Terry. They also bring this up back in uh, King of Fire's Destiny when they adapted the series again. Mm. Terry's girlfriend in that in that uh, adaption is named Angela, who has more or less the same role. Angela and Anaconda? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> so, uh, they both try to poison Terry, but before he takes a big drink, uh, they both stop him. 
and uh, they say, oh, uh, Geese made me do it, and uh, Terry says to Angela, well, you tell Geese that I'm on to him, and then he leaves. But in uh, Lily's case, they make out. Oh, damn. Mm, Why not? Me. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Terry's just a trash store. So the tournament happens, and uh, Terry and Andy end up in the finals, and they're forced to fight each other. But Geese has the clever idea to have an assassin uh, try to snipe them while they're in the arena. Oh. So the snipers train on uh, both brothers, and uh, they fire, but Joe spots them in time and takes the bullet for them. Huh. And then as he does, the lights go out. And uh, Lily actually helps them out. But uh, before they escaped, Lily stayed behind uh, at the last minute to make sure they got down the rope. But uh, unfortunately, Geese shows up behind her and he's like, Oh, you ungrateful bitch, how could you? I raised you like this and this is how you obey me. Mm. And then he kills her. Oh. Shows her the door in a very gentlemanly fashion by throwing her out of a two story building. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. So, uh, Master Tongue shows up in a jeep and, uh, basically drives them off. But before they do, uh, Billy lodges his staff right into Tongue's chest. Oh, damn. Go, Billy. Yeah. And the very next scene, which is spontaneous, by the way, this happens instantly. They're from the car, and then Master Tongue is in a hospital. Oh. Unfortunately, he isn't gonna live for very long. So he ends up taking Terry aside, and he's all like, Hey, Terry, I'm going to teach you my final technique. Do you want to see it? And Terry's like, uh, sure. And uh, he basically teaches uh, Terry the Hakyo Kuseiken. Hakyo Kuseiken? Kazuntai. I kind of surprised I got that in the same. Yeah, There's you did. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is basically the most non-American name for one of Terry's moves. This is not canon, by the way. So he doesn't actually know this. But it's basically a giant hurricane. That's the best way I can describe this. He spins like a top and then basically whirlwinds and show up. There so you go, like, Gracia. Much so better. Tongue ends up teaching him this technique by uh, showing him it, but after he does, Tongue's die standing up. Still like a statue. Chad. Yeah. The Ganador of Death. So Andy and Joe, meanwhile, go to uh, Geese's uh, tower. Yeah, I guess it would be a tower. It's kind of an island. Mm -hmm. I don't know where this place is exactly. So they go to Geese, and uh, they end up fighting Raiden and Billy, and they beat them. And they go to Geese, and uh, Geese is all like, uh, fuck you guys, and he ends up beating Andy's ass in one shot, and Joe too. Oh, joy. But Terry shows up on time and is all like, Geese, I'll never forgive you, and then he ends up fighting him. And Geese is all like, you fool, I know all your moves. He's like, ah oh, shit, he knows all my moves. But you don't know this one, and then he uses the hockey up stick and, and he beats Geese with it. And the mouse spot done. Yeah. And, uh, big, the boys pay their respects at the grave, and they go their separate ways. And that's Fatal Fury 1, the OVA. Huh. Enjoyable time. Also, Angela still dies in uh, the Fatal Fury Destiny. King Fighters has the ad adaptation. Sorry, long names. <sighs> but Jeff, Tongue, and Lily are all still dead. Wah, wah. Face nice as a fool. Are you prepared to face judgment? If no. you crit me, yes, you are. Yes, I am. For you. Best judgment of the heavens. I cast dark magic. Long, how long does the longbow do? Should be decently. I'm just laying uh, Melusine get oh, lost okay. experience. So I want to get to level 18. 
Longbow is really good in this game, goddamn. Right? Oh, Jesus, that's not bad at all. Good hits. No, I, I more meant the hit rate generally. That's especially good for a longbow status. He has capped skill, to be fair. No, that's fair. I don't know how to feel about that palette, though. Yeah, I think it's okay. Hmm. You need some work. I like the uh, middle piece of it, at least. Yeah. That'll do. All right, time to uh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, good time, time to ram this in the face. Peace out, bro. Oh. What? Oh, I have. My Spike! I failed. I'm perfect. Oh, I love, I love that line. Arosi's blood has awakened. Gnarly, let's do it, dudes. Wait, why do you keep gaining experience? Why That's a visual funny? bug. Don't worry about it. Oh. It'll, uh, experience resets to normal after that. When you get like cat level 20. You didn't even do anything. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Despite the fact you could've. You would've actually been the MVP of the map, but... Oh, he would've swept everyone. Maybe. Our uh, we. One of your dudes just went crying on the crying to the corner. Yes, Kevin Olgar. For the glory of my Syrians! Might have had trouble with some of the mages. Glory to Harry Glad. Lord So great that he didn't even achieve by himself. He said, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nice. Good job. That. Good job. Good job, Vance. Ooh. Vance. Oh, Local mercenary too angry to die. Yes, Merc, that is his father. Oh, there you are. Hey, I got the level 20, didn't I? Rude. Hey, can I can I point out that this guy he let his own men go out to do his own work, and instead of leading them and making sure they survive, he stared at his son the entire fight. What the fuck kind of commander is this guy? <laughs> Tyrans is a, is, a is a country ruled by power. Mil military strength is everything. If you can't hack it, well, we look down on you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it is the common folk. Okay. Wind of gold. Cure six babies. That's also a quote, goddamn. Oh, he's dead, dad. He's dead. Who is just going to accept that win? Why does that remind? What does this guy remind me of? Like thinking of a dead son. You can shove it up your ass. You can shove it up your ass. Oh. 
That could have gone better. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're past the point of no return. You just walked through the river like it was nothing. What's happening to me? Some of that, some of that anger is really seeping out now, right now, and I'm getting some very uh, interesting comments from you guys as well as the chat. And I remember Eric; he just hated every scene where Vance and uh, Olorgar were bitching at each other, like, "Oh God, please shut the fuck up, you two." <laughs> well, I'm just like, "Oh boy, <laughs> give it to me, baby." <laughs> I played this map pretty poorly because I split up my team, and especially I only had two healers when I had the one. What two see two times? I basically so split my teams over to four and only had two healers. And that was a bad idea. We ended up losing a lot of generics as a result. But I had to make sure I get get those villages, and that was also a result. I got uh, Russell and Ryzen both out, out, and that's not good. But we could have done a lot. I could have done that a lot better. But on the whole, it was okay. It, it it's big. It served its purpose of being. Hey, we're in a war now. Have have all these people to throw in. And it was fine. Um, you know, the whole daddy issues is really going strong. I hmm, hmm, that, that, his anger, hmm, 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 hmm. Anger, yeah. anger, it's a brain. Anger, <laughs> Honestly, the real MVP at that map was Ron. 